let's pretend the uh, take two <laughs> octopus and kubernetes so <laughs> kubernetes is a container orchestration tool um you you basically you you put your containers together into pods that represent your running applications and kubernetes takes care of scheduling them so that they will run on actual servers so it's useful for scaling them out um, basically managing the infrastructure so that you don't have to do that manually it's supported by all the major cloud providers google um, aws and azure all have their own implementations of it now and yeah do people host this themselves feels like it would be pretty painful but so the way that this might fit into Octopus is that if we have a new target called a Kubernetes cluster, and then a couple of new steps called Kubernetes apply and uh, a kube control script step, the, the new target, the Kubernetes cluster, it basically, a, it would be represented by an API endpoint. So it's a URL with an authentication mechanism. The, the cluster is the thing that exposes the API that you use to interact with, with Kubernetes to orchestrate this. By, by creating a new target type for this, we also give ourselves a nice hook in the future to do, to do some um, diagnostics so we could show some extra information here, which pods are running on it, which services are running, custom health checks, that, that kind of thing. The, and also, little unrelated the I think it's almost time for us to split out the target type screen into something more like the step select screen which is pretty cool too because we're, we're starting to really open up the, the target zoo which I think is really really neat yeah <clears throat> um, so the kubernetes apply step there's a number of kind of modes for interacting with kubernetes I guess and the kubernetes apply step is their declarative way of interacting with kubernetes so it's very similar to the Azure ARM templates or AWS CloudFormation, you basically throw a big JSON or YAML file at Kubernetes and say, this is what I want this to look like. Um, so our implementation of this is a little bit similar as well. So we would say, where do we get the template from? Realistically, it's probably going to come from within a package. And we specify the path to the template within the package. And then we'll probably, the Kubernetes um, apply command has about a hundred different flags that can be passed to it. So we'll probably just have a catch all at the end that lets you supply whatever over uh, of those flags you want to pass into the command as well. Um, so on the left here, you can see this is a, a very simple example of what a, a Kubernetes template looks like where the octopus secret source really comes in here is well, well firstly we would run a uh, variable substitution on one of these but more than that these specify container images in them and what we would do it when you go to create a release is we'll change to sort of a two-phase release creation where we'll read the template at release creation time and make available the as packages on the release creation screen, any container images specified in the template. So you see here, this, this example specifies an Nginx uh, image. We'll show that as a package available on the create release screen, which you can select the version of. When you then deploy that release, we will replace the, the version in the, <clears throat> in the template that gets deployed. So this, this fits pretty nicely with what Octopus does. It lets you snapshot a set of container versions with, with a release and push them through your environments. So being up for us, being able to fetch the versions of these means you'll have to have the, uh, the container feeds configured as feeds in, in Octopus. But other than that, it should just work pretty nicely. So you'll see here on this screenshot, the first package here is the package that the template comes from. The, the rest will be the container images themselves that you want to version as part of that. So that, that's pretty much the, that would be the Kubernetes apply step. Um, and I think that will all work pretty nicely. And that feels like the natural way you would interact with this, with Octopus, because there's a whole lot of other Kubernetes commands as well, but they're all very imperative. And, you know, in, in a repeatable deployment model, probably don't make as much sense as something like this, but will obviously aim to support whatever you want to do. So the, the catch all would be this kube controller script step where we would 
let you write a script where we will provide the um, cube control exe file pre-authenticated with the against the cluster. So you, at that point, you can run whatever commands you like against against Kubernetes against your Kubernetes cluster. So if you want to run a uh, you know Kubernetes delete or scale or whatever command you, you happen to want to run, that's how you would do it. And we can always create first class steps for those in the future, but for any of those commands that don't take a template, we're providing a lot less value than we can for the apply step. So what does Octopus bring to the table for Kubernetes? Because going and looking at when we sort of first started investigating this, it wasn't, you know, personally I was, wasn't sure exactly how Octopus would fit in this world. Do we have a role to play? But I think definitely yes. It's and it's pretty much the same story as for all the other technologies we support. We, we provide that release management and progression, the ability to have different configurations for different environments, the snapshotting the release with the container images and, and moving it through your environments all feels, feels nice and it feels like it fits pretty well. So what's next? Um, we hopefully get a little bit more internal feedback on this first. The, the tricky thing with the Kubernetes one, I guess, is there's not a whole lot of people internally who have a lot of Kubernetes support. Often when we're developing features, it feels pretty easy because we are our own target customers. So we just ask ourselves, what would we like to see? This one is, it's a little bit more limited than that, but I definitely encourage anyone who has Kubernetes experience or even just thoughts on this to, to reach out. And if there's enough interest, we'll schedule a, a Feature Friday session or, or something to discuss it. Um, I've already pinged a few people directly to, to get some feedback on this. Uh, then the next step would be a public RFC for it. And ideally it would be nice to get something shipped uh, as soon as possible, even in quarter two. Um, so that's the plan at the moment. Any uh, questions, thoughts or comments? Yeah, I just had a question. The feeds that Kubernetes use to get the Docker images, are we somehow configuring that from our own list of feeds or it knows feeds already or what? The Kubernetes cluster already knows feeds. So we, this is an interesting point. We, we won't do any package acquisition like we typically do for the Kubernetes stuff. Those containers will never hit the Octopus server. There's no reason for them to. So we, we just tell Kubernetes to, the container images to use and it you have to have configured it to know how to find them so if you're using private repo you have to have told the cluster about it so don't be able to just use the existing docker fees really yeah so the, the having the feed in octopus would purely be so that we can find the versions of those images to expose to you at release creation time because that's the thing right when when you do these kubernetes deployments the chances are between your releases, the thing that's going to change isn't the actual Kubernetes file, right? That, that'll probably rarely change at all. It'll be the, the versions that you want to push up in that package. So that's kind of the piece that changes more so than the, the even though that the config will probably come from a package itself, I'd imagine nine times out of 10, it's just going to be the same one going forward again and again with different internal packages. Yeah, the things that are likely to change in the template between environments are probably just things like you can put labels on pods and uh, things that are running. So you probably might want to stick a, an environment label, for example, on it that might be different for, depending on the environment you're deploying to. But yeah, other than that. And that's, and that's part of why we're also looking at the YAML and, and JSON transform files, because again, you can easily see people wanting to put labels into those um, pods that might change based on release or, or you know, any, you know, in, anything that they want. And it'd be nicer to be able to do that with a transform side by side than have people sort of bastardize their actual config with um, octopus variable templates and things like that. And unfortunately, Kubernetes doesn't let you supply a properties file like the CloudFormation and ARM templates do, um, which feels like a, a logical way to support this, but they don't for the moment. Yeah, so you wouldn't have to define any Docker feeds in Octopus if you weren't using the UI. So if, you were, if you were creating releases from or some other tool and you're just saying, you know, form those requests up yourself, then you don't need to configure a Docker feed. You, yeah, you don't need to configure a Docker feed, but then you don't get the package selection process and locking this package version. If, if the package, so that's the idea that config 
typically when they're building it, it's going to have some packaging that might be Nginx version 2.0, and that's in the package because that's where they used to develop it. Potentially, if that doesn't change, then I don't need Octus to select it. Well, I think what Mike's saying is you can still have that take place, but if you're doing it all from Team City or um, mm. Octalexy, you don't actually have to have the Docker feed to figure out. Uh, yeah, 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 you can yeah, yeah, just send yeah. the versions yeah. across. So you still have the Docker feed there with you because you know, other Sunday community is the key. Is Correct. Part. Yeah, we Octopus doesn't really touch it. Yeah. Yeah. But it is nice that it's evaluated. You can stick that config in as a feed, and then, uh, then we put some bumpers up for your modeling. <laughs> Sweet. The other thing we might want to do as part of that step is being able to inject like environment variables as well. So I imagine potentially something similar to what we've got with the Docker run step where you basically just add key value, key value for, for properties and they combine that to whatever makes sense for them. Yeah. That you sort of in addition to if they had their own transform file. Yeah. Right, that's exactly. been my on top. That's right. Yeah. It passed through the container as environment yeah. variables are launched. But we want to try to avoid, wherever possible, touching and having to interrogate that config as well, just to make it less fragile. Yeah, yeah this is one of the, I um, mean, for the ARM template and the CloudFormation templates, we're pretty, we don't try to parse those in any way at all. Whereas with these Kubernetes ones, we have to at least go looking for the container files within them, which feels pretty doable. Yeah, we don't want to do too much more than that. Yeah. Actually, for that AWS and actually for ARM as well, we do pull out properties and we've got API endpoints that do that. So a lot of that work is probably, well, that's the base of that work is done for you. It's, yeah, it's more about minimizing. That's a good point. Like, what we don't want to do is part the whole document and have this metadata idea of what the document represents and you know, change pieces of it and rewrite it and that sort of thing. If we need to poke in, Working, I suppose we're possible, but yeah, just getting that to a minimum. You'd think if anything was going to be static in a Kubernetes config file, it's going to be the <laughs> container. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't see that changing. The problem is, I think it gets quite nested as well. Yeah. That's where it starts to become a little bit more yeah, tricky. Yeah. Good. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I definitely encourage, if you're interested, uh, there's, this is written up in the specs repo in the Kubernetes uh, specs. So feel free to uh, create issues, comment there, or ping program management channel directly with any feedback. Great. And I think that's it for today, is it? Yeah, nice good one. All right. Have a lovely day, everyone. Bye.